What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking our top five wide receiver steals for the 2022 fantasy football season. Basically, these are all guys ranked outside of the top 25 wide receivers uh, per rankings currently that have serious league winning upside. So this is definitely a must tune in episode. Make sure to check it out. If you guys enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. Let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree? What other names would you put on this list along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. And lastly, make sure to check out the 2022 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. It has everything you can want at a great value. Top 150 overall player rankings in standard and PPR formats, individual player bios, tiers, projections, along with general fantasy advice. Details in the description. But with that being said, Let's get into it. And as you can see, we've got our consensus ADP positions here for the wide receiver uh, pulled up. Quick note, this is based on PPR scoring uh, formats, so keep that in mind. But without further ado, let's kick it off. And like I said, we're talking all guys outside of the top 25 wide receivers. So immediately, we're talking great value, uh, guys that can be absolute steals, and we are kicking it off here um, at the number 30 spot with one Allen Robinson of the LA Rams. The fact that, you know, Allen Robinson is ranked this low is absolutely insane. Outside of the top 25 wide receivers, even more so, the fact that this is, again, like I showed you guys, in PPR scoring formats to me is insane. The guy has been a top 10 wide receiver with guys like Bortles and Mitch Trubisky. Now you give him Matthew Stafford, a guy that just turned Cooper Cup in his first season with him into a triple crown winner, a guy that has had 5,000 yard passing seasons that can sustain multiple fantasy relevant wide receivers. And now you add Allen Robinson to this offense and Allen Robinson that you know, is an upgrade over Robert Woods and Allen Robinson that I think is going to prove that the gap between him and Cooper Cup is going to be a lot smaller than people want to admit. Uh, honestly, I think Allen Robinson is a discount Cooper Cup this year. I really do. You know what the difference is? The difference is uh, to get Cooper Cup, you're going to have to uh, draft him in the first round, probably like fifth, sixth overall, whereas Allen Robinson, depending on the size of your league, you can get him in the fifth round, hell, maybe even in the sixth round, uh, and you shouldn't be able to get wide receiver ones in the fifth or sixth round, but that is exactly what is going on with Allen Robinson. In PPR formats, I have him as a top 15 wide receiver, uh, one of the guys that is going to smash his ADP, just insane return on investment. Uh, I think he is one of the easiest, most clear-cut winners right now. I, I don't understand why he's so undervalued. Yes, he disappointed last year, but he was not an awful Bears team, and competent Bears team that just had nothing going for them um, with a quarterback in Justin Fields that can't hold Matthew Stafford's jock strap. Um, so <laughs> it's a night and day difference. I, I'm here to tell you folks, Allen Robinson is going to have a resurgence and he's going to remind people why just a year ago he was being drafted at the end of the second round. Uh, I'm all in on Allen Robinson. I draft him in the third round. Hell, but if I can continue to take advantage of this ADP discrepancy, I will. So I implore you guys to do the same. You can draft him in the fifth, sixth round and comfortably have him be your starting wide receiver, uh, your wide receiver one. But let's move on and talk one Michael Thomas next of the New Orleans Saints. And again, this is going to be predicated on Michael Thomas being healthy, obviously, because, you know, unfortunately for Michael Thomas, the last time we saw him play, I feel like was almost 10 years ago. Obviously, that's not the case, but, you know, the last full season that he played was his record-setting season where, you know, uh, Drew Brees was still on the Saints, to be fair. Now it's the Jameis Winston show, um, at least for the short term, 
but we've seen Michael Thomas be successful with Jameis Winston. And to me, that is the key. As long as Michael Thomas is healthy and Jameis Winston is the quarterback for the Saints, the Saints are going to have that upside offensively passing the football. And Michael Thomas, say what you will about him, um, you know, slant king, et cetera, um, that he's burned you these last two seasons. All those things are true. Uh, and yes, the Saints have added guys like Jarvis Landry and Chris Olay via the draft. Um, but I still think Michael Thomas is the top option for this Saints uh, wide receiver group, uh, at least again for the short term this 2022 season. It seems like, um, you know, he's not going to be starting the year on the pup list. Uh, it seems like the, um, you know, potential issues that were there between him and the Saints uh, right now aren't all that big of an issue. And all those things, um, I think, can culminate into him actually being available for the year. And what we can't deny is when Michael Thomas has been available, he has been, I mean, he's been a wide receiver one. He's been a top 10 wide receiver. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen again, but look, that upside is still there. He's only two years removed from uh, when he had that record setting season. He's not all that old either. Um, it, it's just, he has to stay healthy. That's, that's the main thing. That's why you're getting a discount on him this year. But when you look at, again, the ADP, he comes in at the number 33 spot. Um, People are going to be drafting him like in the, again, fifth, sixth, maybe even in the seventh round. Um, comes in at the 77th overall uh, player ranking here. That's that's tremendous upside. And to me, I think the uh, risk is definitely outweighed by the reward. Like, okay, Michael Thomas probably, uh, you don't want him to be your first wide receiver drafted or something like that because there is risk associated with him. But tremendous tremendous upside if you can grab him as like your flex option or like stash him on your bench I think that is absolutely a great league winning upside type of move to me he's still the top wide receiver for the Saints he's going to get the most targets out of all those guys uh, and for that reason to me he is worth investing a pick in uh, especially when you can get him at such a huge discount. Next, moving on to the number 37th overall wide receiver here, we have got Juju Smith-Schuster of the now Kansas City Chiefs. And honestly, I don't think we're talking enough about Juju Smith-Schuster. And yes, I get it. These last two years, he's burned you with injuries. And he didn't live up to the hype in terms of, you know, being the Antonio Brown replacement. Uh, Big Ben took a step down. And, you know, all of that kind of hype, it just never got back to his one magical season that he had opposite Antonio Brown. And, you know, now people are saying, well, what's changing in Kansas City? Well, I would say the following. First and foremost, Juju Smith-Schuster is now unquestionably the top wide receiver for the Kansas City Chiefs. Yes, um, you know, there's some intriguing rookies with some nice upside there, but by far Schuster has the highest floor and I would argue equal um, upside as those other guys. And don't get me wrong. He's not going to be the Tyreek Hill replacement. No, but uh, he doesn't have to be to return on uh, great fantasy value. And he's not going to be the one that has to do it all by himself. I know people might be worried about that, but Travis Kelsey is still the top pass catching option for the Kansas City Chiefs. You know, he's kind of in that A-B role. Um, so Schuster can potentially be that 1B to the 1A of uh, Travis Kelsey. And I think that's the role he is meant to have. Uh, I really like the situation for Schuster. And on top of all of that, he's playing with Patrick freaking Mahomes. Um, you know, an upgrade over Ben Roethlisberger, a very high scoring offense in general, in what's going to be the highest scoring division in all of football. I think we're not giving Schuster enough credit. Yes, he's burned you, uh, but there's been injuries. There's been the decline of Big Ben. Uh, there's been other issues, you know, emergence of guys like Deontay Johnson in Pittsburgh. Schuster is now the guy for the Kansas City Chiefs. I think he is going to uh, potentially, you know, remind us of the things he was doing back in 2018 opposite Antonio Brown. And 
I think he has honestly low end wide receiver one upside. You can get him in like the sixth round again here, 86th overall wide receiver. Tremendous, tremendous value. Now let's move on to the fourth name here on our list. We have got Rashad Bateman of the Baltimore Ravens comes in at the number 38 spot. And again, another situation where after the departure of the former number one wide receiver, AK Marquise Brown, who's now with the Cardinals, um, the opportunity for Bateman is tremendous. And look, it's no coincidence that last year Bateman was our favorite wide receiver, not named Jamar Chase out of the rookie class. Now, unfortunately, he dealt with injuries and then Lamar Jackson was injured and, you know, he never really had um, the chance to flourish his rookie season. But now he's the number one guy at the wide receiver position. He does have Mark Andrews also there to take some pressure off of him. And Lamar Jackson uh, entering the season healthy. I, I I think Bateman is without a question the top wide receiver for the Ravens. He's you know, there's no reason why he can't get the same volume Marquise Brown was getting. And honestly, I think he's has a better skill set than Marquise Brown. Um, you know, a more physical wide receiver, um, you know, bigger. Um, so I think higher upside in terms of potential targets, in terms of touchdown upside as well. I'm really, really excited about Rashad Bateman. You're going to be able to get him like in the seventh round, um, a guy that on an offense, yes, it's run first, but you know, even when that was the case last year, we saw what Mark Andrews did. He was the number one overall tight end in all fantasy football. Marquise Brown, the first couple of weeks of the season, he broke out. He was a wide receiver one while Lamar Jackson was healthy. There's no reason why Rashad Bateman can't do the same here. Uh, very bullish on him this season. Uh, I think having him ranked here as the 38th overall wide receiver is absolutely way, way, way too low. Um, he can definitely be a top 20 guy on the year. But then finally, let's wrap it up here with one of our favorites, Alan Lazard of the Green Bay Packers. You've heard us talk about him uh, many, many other times. Well, we're going to beat a dead horse here, apparently, because um, Lazard can be one of the biggest breakouts of 2022. Uh, comes in at the number 46 spot. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if he puts up low end wide receiver one numbers. And this has everything to do with the departure of Devontae Adams. Okay, you know, if Adams was still there, then it's a completely different story. But somebody has to pick up that slack. And I really do think by far and away, Lazard is the most trustworthy wide receiver, the most experienced wide receiver the Green Bay Packers have. And specifically the one that Aaron Rodgers at this point in time trusts the most. Um, yes, yeah, sure, Randall Cobb is there, but... Um, Lazard is, you know, his skill set, he's younger, he's more physical, he can do more things at this point in his career. Um, and I think he's going to be given the opportunity. We know that Aaron Rodgers, once, you know, you're his go to guy, his favorite guy, he is going to force feed you the football. And Lazard, out of all of those wide receivers, you know, uh, Christian Watson, Sammy Watkins, Cobb, he has the inside edge on all of them. He proved last year that he was the number two wide receiver for the Green Bay Packers. Now it's only, you know, normal for him to take another step forward. All the reviews we've heard from Aaron Rodgers in regards to Lazard has been nothing but glowing. Um, I think out of all the wide receivers, he's easily going to lead them in terms of targets, in terms of receptions, yards, everything. Uh, and I think he can take an astronomical step forward. Um, again, just basically, like I suggested, a huge breakout season. Now, I don't think he's going to put up Devontae Adams type of numbers, you know, a top five wide receiver. But I mean, if you look at the guys like Jordy Nelson, when he had his breakout, um, the stats point to similar production beforehand. And then all of a sudden, when he was given the opportunity, he took it. Aaron Rodgers is a guy, simply put, he's a Hall of Fame quarterback, uh, potentially the greatest of all time. And he has the ability to make those around him elite. I think that's exactly what we're going to see here with Alan Lazard. I am drafting him absolutely everywhere I can. You can get him in the eighth round. Um, yes, his ADP is rising a little bit, but to me, he is still an absolute steal. Honestly, huge, huge upside. Um, and even if he busts somehow, um, again, it's not costing you all that much. For what could be, you know, the potentially 
light version of the next Devontae Adams or something like that. Uh, I think this is a great, great deal for Alan Lazard. But with that, we wrap up our top five wide receiver steals with league winning upside for the 2022 fantasy football season. As always, let us hear it in the comment section. Did you agree, disagree? Who else would you put on this list along with any other questions you guys might have? I'll do my best to answer them all. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin. And lastly, make sure to check out the 2022 ADP Fantasy Football Draft Guide. Everything you want at a great value details in the description. And in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.